In today's video, we're going to check out the Admin Redis feature plugin for the Admin UI and how you can get better visibility into your Redis instance quickly with this plugin that is built right into your application. Having limited visibility into different parts of your system can make it harder to diagnose issues and test new features during development. Being able to monitor and inspect these systems right from an admin UI in your application means you don't have to worry about additional hosting, firewall issues, authentication and configuration since your application already has all that context. The Admin Redis feature plugin for ServerStack gives you a simple interface to see high level info about your Redis instance as well as the ability to search through your data, invoke commands and edit values. And best of all, this interface is built right into your existing admin UI and shipped with your application, so no additional integrations or servers are needed. For existing applications that already use the admin UI and integrate with a Redis server, you just need to register the plugin with your app host, restart your application and log into the admin UI. No additional code or configuration is required because your application already has context of how to connect to your Redis instance. To demonstrate what an application needs to utilize the Redis admin UI, we're going to create a simple web application, import some data into a local Redis instance, and walk through using the different features of the interface. To kickstart our new web application, we can use the Get Started page on the servicestack.net website. Navigating to servicestack.net and clicking on the Get Started button at the top right will be greeted with the project generator. To get access to the admin UI, we will need a few features for our web application. Here we can select the features we need, provide a name and download our solution. For this example, we will want authentication, an auth repository of RDBMS, an RDBMS of SQLite and a data store of Redis. Provide the name for your application and click on the web template to download your solution. Once downloaded, we can unzip the application to a local working directory and open it with your favorite .NET IDE. In the solution, we can see the standard four project setup for service stack templates. And in the main project of the app host, we'll have several configure c -sharp files from mixing in the features from the template generator. The configure.auth.cs file is where we add support for different types of authentication methods. The configure.auth repository uses the registered database to configure the storage of our user information. The configure.db is our configured SQLite connection, which is registered into the IOC container, and the configure.redis.cs file, which registers a Redis client connection to localhost by default. To get access to the Redis admin feature, we will need a user with the admin role to log in, and the Redis admin feature plugin registered with our app host. Opening the configure.authrepository.cs file and looking in the configure app host method, we can uncomment this line of code here to create a demo admin user, which we will use to log in. And then in the configure.redis.cs file, we can uncomment the line that adds the admin Redis feature plugin to our app host. Once running, we can click the view API details link, log in with the demo admin user and navigate to the admin dashboard. Here we will see some basic stats about our Redis integration, specifically related to the usage by our application. Other values will depend on your Redis setup and will be able to give you some high level visibility into your application's integration with your Redis servers. These high level Redis client stats from your application can make it a lot more obvious when your application might be having issues. For example, seeing an increase in retry count, success and timeout information here could immediately help you confirm what you're seeing in other error logs. Clicking on the Redis menu on the left hand side, we will see the results of the Redis info command presented in the UI. These values will depend on your version of Redis and setup, but we can see here various stats like port, uptime, memory usage and others. At the top, we also have the search tab. Here we can filter keys and look at data in the instance itself, as well as create new entries using the new dropdown on the right. This editor has support for strings, lists, sets, sorted sets and hashes, as well as friendly editing tools for JSON values like auto formatting and human friendly previews. 
The list, sorted sets, and hash value editing is also made easier by being able to add individual values within the list set or hash. We can specify sort values for sorted sets when creating or adding new values, and the auto formatting that can be used with string values when you might be storing JSON representations of your serialized objects. To better illustrate this functionality, we can load up our Redis instance with some data from the Redis developer community datasets. For example, here we can import an example user database using the Redis CLI, and into a separate database on the same Redis instance, we can import the actors dataset. Once imported, we can refresh our Redis admin UI and browse the user data. The edit tab enables us to easily manage the data for a specific key or set. Here we can change the user first name by adding a value with the same key. Alternatively, we can use the X at the top right to delete an entry and replace it with a new one. If you don't know the exact key you're looking for, you can use the related values option to easily use keyboard navigation to cycle between keys with similar prefixes. Changing your database on the info page, we can also look at multiple database values and browse and manage our data as needed. If you need more control, we can use the commands tab at the top. Here we can see a history of the commands we've run, as well as the ability to run new ones of our own. For example, I can change the same user's name again by using the previous command by clicking on it and changing the value. This gives us a huge amount of flexibility to manage data or run scripts as needed right from our admin UI. If you are working with multiple Redis servers in lower environments, for example, you can even enable modifiable connections in the feature plugin itself. Once enabled, we can run our application and provide connection details to our Redis instance right into our admin UI to change which server your application is configured with at runtime. This works well when your application is set up with stateless authentication like JWT, where you might be using Redis as a storage for a specific type of dataset that needs rapid access. By changing your Redis store at runtime from a simple web UI, this enables developers to easily test scenarios of your application using different datasets. By adding the admin Redis feature plugin directly to our application, we've increased our visibility at no additional overhead of extra servers or integrations. We also get more contextualized information about our application's use of the Redis integration and the ease of access that comes with using the existing admin UI that is built and deployed right along with your application. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.